Are you looking to establish a powerful online presence for your brand? Look no further than Live the Dream Media. Our team of experts possess the capabilities and skills necessary to make it happen. From creating compelling content to analyzing data and making strategic decisions, we've got it covered. Don't let a lack of social media know-how hold you back. Visit ltdmedia.net for more information. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We make smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. Okay. It's been live but not recording, so we won't uh, have to ever watch that again. That's sad. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Chris, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, Clint. Christopher D. Simone. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I can't believe I've earned multiple yeah, return yeah. visits. Yeah. It's three That usually or never happens. It's three or four. <laughs> at least three. You're talking to a guy who did Arizona Public Media at the U of A, and they <laughs> kicked me off after one show. So, Well, we'll we see. love you here. We, we, we have a good time. Um, I think we cover some pretty important topics me too um how was your vacation amazing i know you did a little time in colorado, colorado disappeared up into the ridgeway montrose nice. uray uh, yeah. telluride area yeah and just i used to spend a lot of time up in there yep good everything's yeah. a glory of god moment every 23 minutes yeah and the, the amount of snow on the mountains is unreal yeah, the San Juans were just Liz- like it was just snow yesterday. See, you went up like Lizard Head, Lizard Head. So Pass, I, I, right? yeah, we left going through Lizard Head. Yeah. We came up through the Million Dollar Highway, the Ridgeway. Mm-hmm. Sorry, the Durango Silverton mm-hmm. thing. I never did it before, so people said I'll do it once. But uh, and then uh, went you. home through Lizard Head, which of course then I s- never saw a Trout Lake before. Yeah, and that's just like the most beautiful uh, in it. That's just, I thought it was in Switzerland. Well, someone was in the other day. I can't remember who we were talking about. And, oh, I, I do remember. But we were talking about second homes or places that we'd like to beat the heat here. Sure. And mine would be, I've said Durang, around Durango. That area that is area. awesome. It's just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a drive. Yeah. So what my top's that? good enough for me. 12, 12 hours from here? Yeah. Give a little less. Yeah. But I, I, I broke up the trip a little bit. I can't yeah. do all that driving in one day. I used to. Just that's what I did, but right. um, yeah, not anymore. Four or five hundred miles is plenty. Amen, I'm not in that big a hurry. If I'm going more than that, I'm going to fly. Correct yeah. again. Yeah, that's what I did. I yeah. just I'll go to San Diego. Now, don't stop on the way to San Diego. I mean, I didn't I break the trip up that bad, but yeah. we went to Flag, stayed overnight. Yeah, went Flag to that way. It was fine, and did the way same way back. I'm gonna have to go. You know, went past the Four Corners, did not yeah. stop at the Four Corners. Isn't that cool there, though? <laughs> You know, I mean, there's nothing much. I love to that do, you drive but, through New Mexico just for yeah. that uh, two minutes because they had to poke New Mexico up, so they made sure they had four corners. <laughs> it's very cute. That's beautiful <laughs> scenery. Anybody that's never been there, they ought to go at least once. You and you'll recognize it if you've seen any Western ever. Well, you know what's so funny, right? Is that when um, I was at my my kids' graduation in, in Northern Arizona in May, you hear it at Pima County board meetings where they talk about uh, we have our land acknowledgement statement. Dear brothers and sisters of the Navajo Hopi <laughs> tribes, we did steal your land. We're sorry. Oh, yeah. we're also not giving it back. Yeah. So it's, sometimes as you go, as we're, I was driving through uh, the mild wasteland of Tuba City to Cayenta, mm-hmm. and I said, hey, NAU, why don't you trade with them right now? Yeah. Let's trade. Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's I, trade a little bit. Well, the ice cream guys <laughs> the other day. Oh, the uh, Ben and Jerry yeah. guys. Well, I yeah. wasn't going to give them any free props. That's but, all right. Uh, yeah, give give it back. Well, you know where their plants built. Of course. <laughs> Hypocrisy reigns uh, supreme, my friend. Well, let's just jump in there. Sure. That's where we're, that's where our kind of our strong <laughs> suit, right? Come on, Chris. Uh, we I call it unplanned end. excellence. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I read something yesterday, and when I mentioned it to you just a couple minutes ago, you had – the, like the flip to that or the, the the answer to that. Or at least support material. <laughs> exactly. Not much, but a little bit. $5.5 trillion since 2020 is what the American public is short in their savings account. 
That's $17,000 for every man, woman, child in the United States. Sure. Which is about what we pay per year in debt or what we all owe in per year in debt or low? national <laughs> debt. So, and then you take public, uh, David provided this number the other day. What was it, David? 20 million in personal debt, a trillion in personal debt. So we've lost five. We've got 20 trillion in personal debt. And then to piggyback on some stuff that you and I have talked about, because we, I believe, and I believe you feel the same way, is part of the, all the big picture. Education in the United States is it's horrifying. So there's a lot. There, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot there. I know that. So but. it's it's really a um, it's a symptom in a way of what's kind of the big picture. So the other big stat always is always look at what they call the national savings rate, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. of course is how much of someone's household income, individual income, is being saved for actual retirement, and the number is amazingly small yeah i mean it's single digits i mean if it, if it was six to seven percent of yeah. america doing that i'd be like you'd be like hey that's yeah, that's be. a healthy number well you know I've what seen i negative. think that's what it is or somewhere close to that that's okay. about it i've seen negative right oh, yeah. which means basically more americans are spending more than they make right so uh so that's a problem so um you have if you don't have Americans who are being forced to have yeah. money come out of their paycheck through payroll deduction. That number is really bad. Right. It's really bad. And it's just human nature is not to save how many parables through human nature, <laughs> right? Yeah. Squirrels and nuts yeah. and Ferdinand yeah. the mouse yeah. and all those things, right? We're, it's just not in our nature to save, right. even though we need to. Um, that's why Social Security is such a huge political volleyball because a lot of people really, 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 really survive on that. You know how many? How Since 1935? How many? 93% of all Americans retire needing Social Security to survive. Sounds about right. Fact. Right? Because it's forced out of your paycheck. Yeah. yeah. There's something about human nature that we, and we haven't taught it. No, and that's that. I, we haven't taught it. We that, haven't taught this is important. And I think that's the big. That's a multi generational yeah, problem. Yeah, and, it, and it's been going on a long time. This well, has been going on. Um, so they would say, that, you know, <laughs> the, the greatest generation or blah, blah, blah. They're better. They were better, right? But I've seen, as a guy, so shameless plug, my brother and I have this company called Blue Chip Planning, mm-hmm. right? Bluechipplan.com, wink, wink. But, and we do retirement stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the people from that generation. Not do the greatest oh, no. job, and well, it wouldn't also, be at, it wouldn't be at seven percent historically for the last eighty eight years. Yeah, if whatever they were the all number. Yeah. It. So um, I think when you talk about um, training of people, right? Okay. We talk about high school. We say, well, what do you need to learn in high school? Like how to back to solutions. Want to do solutions? Mm-hmm. You and I solved reading mm-hmm. a couple of times ago, right? So when it comes to savings, so the idea that high school doesn't have, so they have financial math. You know what financial I math do. is for? Yeah. It's for the kids who hate math. Yes. Right? They're barely making it. They just need, and it's They just, need the credit, man. Right? Come on. And, you know, and the, and, the, and, the, and the math is like, uh, you have $23 and your buddy gave you four, how many dollars mm-hmm. you got, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really, re- they've relegated financial literacy to remedial math, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. disgusting. Yeah, that's true. It's disgusting. So what I would do, there is a cool little book. You can get it on Amazon. I just bought it for one of my kids, kids who's in his 20s, right? It's the Wall Street Journal Book of Basic Planning, basically. It, and they used to sell it for years. It's this thin, I've narrow seen it. paperback. I've seen it. Looks like a pamphlet, basically. Yep, but it's a, it's a book, right? It's you know, it's probably 150 pages, whatever it is. Just do a class on that for kids. Do a class on that. The, first of all, none of them know how to balance anything that has to do with their money. Now, I don't. I know we don't do pay, we don't do balancing checkbooks anymore. Right. Yeah, we, we talked we, about the other day. When was the last time you physically wrote a check and went to your, you know, the lo- the ledger and filled it in and did math? So the financial attitude's so bad that most of our brothers and sisters out there, Clint, are spending money 
and praying to Jesus or whatever their <laughs> deity is mm -hmm. that there's something left over at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's that's where we're at. There's no there's no analysis of oh, here's my expenses. Yeah, no one's no one's I, doing a total monthly expense run, <laughs> Chris. What we're talking about to me is probably next to deity and your faith. What we talk here, what are they? What are the three things that we faith, that we, family, and schools is what okay. I keep talking like a broken record. Yeah, well, and I'm I'm with you. Faith, family, and schools. Faith, family, and education. That's only three things that really should matter. Right. Build it builds the culture. Mm -hmm. Now, part of culture is also what happens with um, entertainment. Mm -hmm. That whole sphere mm -hmm. is also part of culture. Mm -hmm. But if you really, I keep saying it because po politics and changing people in seats are temporary solutions. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's always. It's just going to keep. We're going to as as a country, we're going to keep sliding. Yes. If you don't fix fa faith, family, no matter who's in the White House, yes. no matter who has control of exactly. Congress, exactly. if we don't fix faith, family, and schools, because what's happening is we're having a we're, we're we're growing subsequent generations, we're raising subsequent generations that have no tools to understand or resist power when it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. They don't even know. Look at the last three years of lockdowns. These people have no idea what they what what. I mean. I, I have a, a very healthy distrust of, of government. And long before 2020. Raw, long before. <laughs> it prepared me for 2020. I was that guy. I was talking to someone who you probably know, but we were talking, and I know, great guy. But I know from a, say, um, I, don't, I don't even want to use the word political. I want right. to use the word, our, our approach to getting where we want to go might be different, but I know this person real well. We want the same things yep. and he's a, and I was just talking to him to me. That's where we've got to start. I think people of all political persuasions are starting to quit. Remember the good old days. Don't, 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 how far, how far question are you authority. <laughs> yeah. You know, question authority. Don't, don't trust the man, all that stuff. It's time that we started holding so you know it's really, ourselves accountable first. You know what's scary is, is that the people who said fight the man in the 60s. Yeah, right? the ones that are, are the man. They are the man. the man. And they've taught, I laugh about and, that a and lot. And they've taught the next I generation laugh about that a lot. to don't question the man. I, I, especially California. Well, so th let's, but, th let's talk about the university system, right? How many of those fight the war, I'm putting the, ro I'm putting the flower right. in the gun and all that stuff, yep. how many of those became professors and deans of colleges mm -hmm. who have- And kind elected of, officials right? and- All well, Hollywood, they yeah. become priests, yeah. preachers, Yeah, you know? They're not now, really good preachers. I, I got to say, and I know you feel this way, I love America. I think it's a great place. It's still the greatest place on the planet. I yep. mean, there might be places that are isolated, that, but just all things considered. And when I, and I know I'm speaking for you now, but tell me if I'm wrong. Sure. We, we love this. We want this place for everybody to rock, for it to be justice and everybody have the pursuit of happiness. Like I just said, ha Love your life. Dance. Do the things you want to do. Push yourself. And all I want from government is just a fair playing field. In the story. I don't need government supported businesses. Sure. I don't need government supported schools. I need community important schools. I need community supported businesses. Not something that's dictated to me. Well, I don't want to use the word because I don't want to really flashpoint it. But when you know what happens when business and government and media and education gets into bed together. You know what you know what we're living in, and so, we're there. So, um, America, to this day, no matter with all of our scars and boils and rashes that we have on this country right now. It is the greatest country on the planet that any of us, man, woman, child, I don't care what your race is, whatever your creed is, don't care. We are the comeback. Yeah. We, can, we can change our lives at any moment more easily 
than any other country on the planet. And you know what? I was thinking this. I agree with you 100%. Look at Civil War. It almost decimated us. We were, we were down. We'd almost destroyed our country. It, was, it wasn't old enough to have any real legacy. Remember all and that. We th- came back. Think about what happened from 1870 to, say, 1920, 1930, over that 60 year period. We built railroads. We built commerce. We built the Hoover Dam. I saw an overhead of the Hoover Dam the other day, and I'm thinking that's the kind of a project we need to be working on as a nation. Not necessarily a dam. Well, remember, we but keep saying we're going to do infrastructure. Let's do it. It's falling apart. That was the whole thing during the Obama years, right? It's been falling apart for 30 years. They, they keep complaining about bridges that all are going to fall apart. All, and they, they don't really fix them. It sounds good. But there's one last thing I want to say about the we're the best country to change your life. Right. The thing that pisses me off the most, and I see it in Pima County all the time, it's nationally, mm-hmm. is the people in positions of authority – who put the blockades up for people who are trying to turn their lives around, Mm -hmm. right? For people who are trying to turn their lives around, the people who are trying to do the comeback, the ones that put those blockades in front of those people pisses me off. Mm -hmm. So education's number one. Absolutely. Right? Education. And number two and number three. (laughs) Right, so education's the great equalizer, Clint. Yes, it is. No matter what your again, and I understand to say, oh, they say the kids who live in the poor schools and poor neighborhoods, they don't learn as well. Well, make help work it. Yeah. I, I said this the last time on education, I'll, right? I, I, imagine every kid's an orphan. That's how you run your school. Don't say, oh, they don't have enough encouragement or support from their parents. It, it, their parents don't exist. If you're going to take care of this kid's education, you take care of them like they're all orphans. Put the money in it. Put the accountability into it. Because the accountability yeah. is the part that's missing here. Exactly. So I always hear it all the time. Arizona doesn't fund education. Arizona doesn't fund education. Arizona doesn't. It's about will and accountability. So again, there's great charter schools in Arizona who do it less money per kid. Mm-hmm. And I know the public school people are going to say, well, they're not paying for buses and blah, blah, blah. It's the, They pay their teachers less yeah. too. Yeah. Right, so there's less money per kid allocated for a charter school, and the teachers make less, and the teachers are not on the state retirement system, right. and the charter schools are kicking the public schools' yeah. butts, yeah, because it's about a will and it's about accountability. All right, the amount of kids that are getting so when all these 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 um f- these feel gooders in public schools, mm-hmm. they keep socially passing kids from one grade to the other. Right. I don't want to hurt Janie's feelings. Yeah. Yeah. You're killing that kid. Right. You're killing them because all those deficiencies, again, they keep building up like barnacles on a ship. And then when the kid gets to 10th grade, they can't do math. They can't read. They don't care about uh, anything doing with education. Then the kid drops out and the geniuses at the school board go, well, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, as a kid growing up, I started grade school in probably 1963, 1964. There were kids... There were always kids pretty much, not in kindergarten, but I don't think anybody had to take kindergarten again. But as you grew, there were always kids that were older than they, the rest of the group. Sure. Billy or Debbie or somebody been held back a year. Nobody, there was no. Well, one of my best friends did kindergarten twice. <laughs> he did. Not because he was dumb, because his mom said, you know something, I started him too early. <laughs> Seriously. And he needed to mature. Yeah, absolutely. I get that. When you're four or five, what the hell? You don't know what's and going on. you know on. what? To me, it was, I don't remember it. I don't think there was any shame or nobody said, <sighs> what's he doing here? I mean, no, no it just, we all grew up together. And we're we didn't have together. social media where the kids at age yeah. uh, seven. Uh, Clint's a real dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can I, excuse me? Oh, okay. Um, Hey, for for the, anybody watching right now, all of you, we, we're just getting started now. All that beginning, the first 20 minutes was a preliminary. Because this is really, Chris, what I want to <laughs> lean into. And, and again, read yesterday about the new ESA that was instituted last year, if I'm, if I'm Correct. not mistaken. Uh, they, they Empowerment en- scholarship they, accounts. There you go. They, en- they envisioned 10,000. They're now at... 59,000 yeah, anticipating 100,000 and that's out of 1.1 million kids in Arizona going to school. Okay. So it's 10%, which is great. 
The way I look at this, I'm going to look right at you. If we're failing, and we are in Arizona, we probably, now, but money, I'm going to address money real quick. The schools like New Mexico, Washington, D.C., who pay or who um, invest twice as much, in the case of Washington, D.C., almost three times as much money per student are still at the bottom. So I'm not buying money is the end, the cure-all to this. It, it helps. Money's I mean, part of the foundation, it's, but it's, it's not the road to success. Exactly. And so now we have members of our elected officials in Phoenix right now crying about this ESA. Oh, they hate it. Uh, now it's going to cost the, uh, the the taxpayers, you know, in excess of $300 million to support these 100,000 children. I don't know where they came up with the number because it really should be higher. If so what Clint's 7, talking 000. about, the Attorney General of Arizona, Chris Mays, mm-hmm. is starting to throw shade on mm-hmm. the empower- empowerment Chris is saying it. Chris is up on that. And, Go. Um, so... S- sad Bless to s- Tom Horn's part, heart, though, for standing no, Tom in there. Tom Horn's He's, standing up there. Yes, he is. So it's sad to say the state elected officials in Arizona and other places that are Democrats hate ESAs. Mm-hmm. So what happens is they so they didn't they never they never take any blame for how bad their schools are. They're public schools. Mm-hmm. So then when the parents finally, well, maybe I shouldn't keep subjecting my kid to child abuse called my public school that's nearby. Mm-hmm. And they want a choice and they want to take their money and go someplace else with it. And Arizona has facilitated that almost better than any state of the union. They have. Then it's your fault as a parent that you ran away from their crappy K through 12 school. So I'll say it again, like I like I, I, I tricked you the last two times ago when we talked about reading levels. TUSD, uh, which is the largest school district, is 16% of the kids read at level. Sunnyside's 12. Yeah. And Amphi's probably, f- which is up uh, center part of Tucson through Oral Valley. They're probably high 40s. They're not great. Mm-hmm. And Marana stinks too. They're at 40 or 50. See, none of those num- – obviously the low numbers are acceptable. Yeah. 50 is not acceptable to me. It shouldn't be. Like you said before, it has to be two thirds, three. I, I want ninety percent. I, I everybody ought to be able to read. So last time I looked at one of my Lehman Academies here in Marana, we were what is that number? Mid to high eighties. Okay, that's where the numbers should be. Right, that's where you're at. I mean, everybody. I mean, I don't expect everybody to be reading. I mean, K through K through twelve, you should be able to read at grade level. There's nothing heavy about any of that. But this is the thing about this, the the, the, the like the Chris Mays and Katie Hobbs, and what will happen is that uh, if the Democrats take over the legislature, uh, which is possible because the numbers are pretty close next mm-hmm. year, they could start. So they Dis- it's, dismantling it's, it's, that Yeah, they could quick. dismantle it. And what they will do instead of, <laughs> I think they'll just slowly keep dropping the uh, the funding mm-hmm. per kit. Especially, and they also do that to charters, mm-hmm. and they'll start taking away the profit incentive for people, right. entrepreneurs that want right. to build charter schools or run charter schools, and then it'll, we'll start going back the other way. Well, we've talked before. I'd like to see teachers start at seventy-five thousand a year. Seriously. So, but, but I, mean, I now need you to teach your brains out. But let's start. Let's pay these teachers. If you gave them uh, uh, more kids uh, in the classroom, a few more kids. And say you're going to get an extra 10 G's. They'll be just fine. Mm-hmm. They'll be just fine. The um, I think where we're at too. So uh, Tucson Unified School District, is they're trying to get a f- half billion dollar bond passed. And I've the conversation I have, now they, they've let stuff just fall apart at TUSD. They have serious physical problems with their mm-hmm. schools. But I always say this. I go, let's say – we passed a $1.2 billion bond. We're going to give them double. Do you think the educational outcomes will truly be better or worse? Mm-hmm. No one ever says better. Mm-hmm. No one. Yeah. Anyone who's intellectually honest. Uh, because what happens is if the processes are still broken, if right. we're still socially promoting kids, Nothing if changed. you have the same crappy school board. We got, we got new paint. That's all you're doing. So the city of Tucson, which is one of the worst run places in the Southwest as a municipality, they're all happy that they they announced a million dollars for a new splash pad in one of their parks, which of course, with all the the fentanyl freaks or whatever, as a, as as one of my cop friends told me, I go, so what we so we're building a million dollar fentanyl bath at the park, 
right? So it's about will. It's about accountability, right? And you can only do that through strong families, faith, and schools that are, are doing the job, that have accountability themselves. That's, where, this, that's, that's how this all comes back, bro. I, I love the idea of what you said once before. Hey, parents, 10 of you get together. Take your 70 grand. Hire yourself a teacher. Rent yep. yourself a room somewhere. I've talked to several teachers. I've, I've said this to you probably on a podcast, certainly at a lunch or two. Yep. They love the idea. 10, 12 kids in a classroom? I'm going to get Parent, paid 60 grand? Come on. Teachers want control of their classroom, first and foremost. And a lot of them don't have that in the K through 12 mm-hmm. system. I've said this before many times. So when I was on the board of the Lehman Academies, we have a meeting twice a year with all the teachers. And I sit there and I love talking to the teachers because I want to know where they came from, the new ones. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them come from K through 12 public schools. Mm-hmm. And they literally have taken a pay cut and they're off the state retirement system now going to a a competently managed 401k. And I go, why? And they said, I get to be a teacher again. Mm-hmm. So TUSD might be paying me $4,000 extra, right. and I'm on the state retirement plan, right. but the cost is I hate being a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why when I said that to you, that if the ESA number is 7,000 a kid and you took 10, right, or 12, and we get really co- crazy and go to yeah. 84 Gs, yeah. right, or 96 Gs, right. well, you can have pay the teacher, give them a great retirement, and have some health, some great field trips for yeah. the kids. <laughs> And some kids coming out that can read and actually work a math problem. That's Money shouldn't even be part of the ticket. It's kind of like health care. If you're sick, we should be able to take – somebody should take care of you. Because of my, my – You being, posted something the other day. I'm yes, going to follow that up real fast. Uh, about rather than, rather than giving a break to the student loan, how about giving a break to the cancer victims? Well, yeah, so people who have these ridiculous bills from – hospitals right? for their cancer treatment why don't we why don't we well we help them a little bit or help them a little bit right it's it, that's not a choice whereas the other is and we want that to happen we want people to get educations but so and, and i think the hospitals the hospital lobby is just as big as the college lobby yeah, during, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people in the profession <laughs> it is not well you said it once before we're the united states of insurance sir right we're, we're if you look at the budget, we're uh, basically a insurance company with a hell of an army. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of that insurance is health. It, it, a good it, chunk of it's well, be. it's Obamacare, it's um, Social Security, Medicare, Medicare, yeah. Medicare is huge, yeah. and then interest on debt. That's seventy five percent. Those of, are the we we can't even touch those yet. We got to no. fix problems. <laughs> They're way more. You know what I'm saying? So we on, get out in front I wanna, of some of this I want to get back on your education thing for a second. I have because people know I've been on a school board and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big mouth through the radio show and all this jazz. Wake up, wake up, Tucson. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> they they'll say these are people with young kids and they go, hey, where we don't know where to send Johnny to school. Where would you go? And I say right now. If you're sending your kid to a K through twelve, K through eight public school, you're doing them harm. Mm-hmm. Do not send your kid in Tucson, Arizona, the region, anywhere to a K through eight public school. So I would send them if you can afford a private. There's also I, another shameless plug. We work with a company called Institute for Better Education, where they do. Uh, Arizona has set up these. Um, basically, a individual or a business can get tax credits for donating, donating to this, and then they scholarship kids for private school. So check out Institute for Better Education if you want to send your kid or grandkid. What's the address? What's uh, the address? Uh, we'll come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Kim will say, kill say, me for not memorizing again, it. Though. So anyway, but Institute for Better Education. But what you could do is K-8 through should be a private school or a charter school. And in Tucson, I would send them to Lehman, mm-hmm. Legacy, mm-hmm. Basis. Just be ready for Basis because when the kid gets into middle school – it's a bear. Yeah. So a very important person in my life went to basis for their kin- at junior high, and eighth grade was a bear. That's the toughest. She'll tell you it's the toughest academic year she's, she's ever, ever had, had in her life. And she's an honor student. She went to a, a state university on a full ride, 
And she also knocked out her freshman year of State University with AP credits. <laughs> Okay, at and CDO. And grade of legacy, uh, like basis, a, a, a basis, basis is the hardest. Year. She said that basis, eighth grade, was harder than all all three years. She only went three years to graduate of NAU. Mm. <laughs> well, that's a whole other but thing. That set the, but that set the wheels in motion to make that easier for her. Correct. She was prepared. So she didn't want basis. She should be our goal. Let's have kids eighth grade graduating junior high, heading to co- high school, where it's Things change. Yeah, she wanted to play soccer. Let's have ready. She's a soccer. She's a great soccer Let's player. She wanted Let's to play soccer. Motivated. So now we're going to higher learning. We can get after this. So K through eight is public, no public, private school or good charter. That's what you do. K through eight. Then your your kid will be so advanced and have such good habits that even if they go to a regular high school, that they'll be sense. they'll be an all AP or uh, IB. I'd go AP instead of IB, but IB is fine. Inter- international baccalaureate stuff, but AP, crank out as many AP credits as humanly possible. And I will tell you that in Arizona, there's a 94 percent chance that kid will go to NAU, U of A, or that other place in Tempe <laughs> um, on a full ride. Mm-hmm. That's the way. That's that. That's the way you okay. navigate education. That's going to be a real. <laughs> so let's just like break it down again. Yep. Say that in a more convinced version. <laughs> K through K through twelve. K through eight. I mean K through K eight. K through eight, you should send your kid to a good charter school. There's crap charter schools too. Mm-hmm. Don't get me Absolutely. wrong. Absolutely. But good charter schools. I just named three. Lehman Legacy or um Basis. Basis. And then maybe even La Paloma and the other it's La Paloma Academy is the th- solid work, right? Send them to a good charter for K through eight. And you hit high school? Go to any high school decent public high school you can if you can go private great Great. if you can go push ridge or sal point better right again institute for better education can help pay for this stuff for you but then if they go so um go to cdo go to marana high go to mountain Mm -hmm. view go wherever you want but that kid will be so advanced compared to their peers Mm -hmm. that they will be put on an ap track and get a bunch of ap credits to knock out paying full for ride a scholarship at the end of this correct that's i've seen it many times that's the way you do it save save your time save your money save your energy do it this don't way. send your kid to a public school k through eight there are rare exceptions that the k through eight school is good it's not the average the average parent uh parents are ignorant it's not their fault no well they were that's where they got their education right Chris. Well, and they're and again, and they're, and they were brought up by parents who went to. I get it, but to break the cycle of indifference, <laughs> they have to make that decision. No K through eight for public school. Don't do it, because what's happening is so in Amphi school, because you and I live in Oral mm-hmm. Valley, right? Mm-hmm. So amphitheater schools have been picked apart by the ba- the the charter schools. They've also been picked apart by themselves. And I'll tell you why. So a a, a lady who taught my daughter in elementary school in amphitheater in Oral Valley, she, um, I saw her at the gym one day. I said, Hey, how's it going? She's like, she's all like, she looks like a train ran over. And I said, what's going on? She goes, you know, it's so frustrating to be a teacher now. And I said, why? Well, she said, well, ever since basis opened up, Lehman opened up, Legacy opened up over here. But I have all my good kids are going to these other schools. Mm-hmm. Then what happened was amphitheater school district, instead of saying, hmm, hmm, what's going on here? How do we make the educational experience better for all kids? You know what we're going to do? We're going to spend a buttload of taxpayer dollars and we're going to build a STEM school. Mm-hmm. And you know what they did? Mm-hmm. They poached their own kids. Yeah. Marana did the same one in yeah. Dove Mountain. Yeah. Right? So instead of saying, hmm, how do all these kids that are at Copper Creek, Mesa Elementary, Harrelson, all these ones at Amphi, how do we make it, or uh, Coronado and Wilson, Wilson, how do we yeah. make it better for them, for all those kids, especially the kids who are the struggling kids? Yeah. So instead of saying, we're not going to make the whole experience better, we're going to create a whole new palace, our own almost charter school. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to say, you basically started your own charter school. And so what she's told me is- Which is nothing wrong. I don't have a problem with that, but don't ignore the rest of it. So she's been teaching for 20 years, and she'll tell you, any teacher will tell you, that you're going to have your mix of kids, right? Yeah. There's going to be your great kids, your trouble kids, and then your kids in varying levels of the middle. Well, what's happened is all of her great kids now, thanks to her own school district, Mm -hmm. are gone. Mm Mm-hmm. Right now, the top half of the middle kids are gone, and now you're left with the 
lower half of the kids maybe that, that are okay they're they're not they're not stupid or anything but they're 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 they're, they're kind of lower middle and then your troublemakers are still there and don't right? you think probably and i don't want to then just, what happens is you're spending too much time on troublemakers and the kids that, that right. are left are like what am i doing don't you think a lot a lot of that too is coming from the parents because parents that are more involved are going to look for better alternatives the parents that aren't involved are fine with the status quo in most cases and so the parents that are more proactive are looking for other alternatives to charter schools you mentioned. So, and the, I, I don't want to. I'm not trying to slam the parents that left their kids in those schools, but oh, it's only there it, ha- it's ignorance. They don't know it, any th- better. There has to be a reason why they chose. No, to stay. Wrong. There are some like you know kind of, and I like, think it's interesting. There's some leftist leaning parents who say, "I got to keep my kid." That's the, that's that's the, that that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Right. Even though their kid, you know, but don't they read the statistics? I mean, don't matter. Emotion rules. I mean, come on, you look, and Johnny can't read, and they can't do math, and I mean, they're babysitters at that point, aren't they? Well, a lot of parents like the the, the babysitter uh, aspect of school. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So uh, I I always hated as a guy who had flexible work hours, right? Between doing blue chip planning with my brother and doing radio and consulting. I could be. I was that guy who could go to school with their kids the first day of school yeah. sometimes, right? Yeah. And I love going the first day of school. Yeah. Love it. The the sense of promise of that first day of school. I love mm-hmm. it. All the kids are all these kids who hadn't maybe seen each other in the summer get to reunite on the playground, mm-hmm. whatever, right? And nothing pisses me off more than the parents go, "Thank God these kids are out of my hair." Yeah, just stop it. Hate it. Stop it. Hate it. I, I like that my kid, that everything has a, 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 there's a cycle to the year. And part of that and the proper part of the cycle is your kids. I love going to school when I was yeah. a kid. Go to school. I did too. Right? I love my parents. I had a great family life, but I, I love going too. to school. But so I always hate when these, these moms and a couple of dads say, oh, thank God. We have we a party. These. I hate it. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? Because they look at public schools as state paid uh, babysitting. You know, I was just, uh, I did a lot of work from home when my kids were little. I was the one that got them ready. Tammy was teaching at that time. Yep. I went to school a lot. You know what? I wasn't really welcome. They didn't, I mean, they didn't, they didn't really want me there sitting in on classes. Why? Not, not that I, w- I mean, they just don't want parents there. Oh, uh, interesting. Especially when I was in, when we were, we lived in Phoenix, you didn't feel welcome. You know, David whispered in my ear, he was an SRO officer yes. at a high school for two or three years. And he was talking about parents using, when we were talking about parents using the school for babysitters. Yep. Oh, yeah. A lot of them, in, including in high school. <laughs> Sometimes I, saw, I, saw it, I saw it as a coach. So I coached baseball, but I coached a lot of soccer. And what I learned is a lot of the parents like the ba- it was like so before I went to do club stuff I I caught AYSO right okay everyone's a volunteer yeah, yeah. it's very reasonably priced to get yeah. your kids in the school so we're talking like eight eight nine year olds kind yeah. of thing right when we first start off and what I learned for like kids who weren't paying attention because you can be you can not you can not be great at soccer I don't care just don't my my biggest rule is never waste all of our time <laughs> right. Right, just right. by doing stupid stuff yeah. or whatever. And when I, I real the thing I learned to get total discipline on my kids that they would learn and stop wasting time is mom and and or dad saw AYSO soccer as the cheapest babysitting mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. So if you were practicing two or three times a week, yeah. I mean, what'd they pay for the year? A hundred bucks? <laughs> right? We're right. working for free. Yeah. So what yeah. I learned is I had all the parents' cell phones on on, on in my book. And if the kids, I said, look, one more, we got our, we got ourselves an issue. Yeah. So they do the one more, and I would just, Tammy, I need you to come uh, yeah. get Jimmy. He's yeah. uh, going home for the rest of the day. Yeah. And what happened was, I, Tammy, sometimes she wasn't at home. She was at like Ross shopping. Yeah. She's like, what? And I, all I could do is she, so she'd show up at the end of the field. And I'd say, little Jimmy over there, go see your mom. Yeah. We'll see you next practice. Yeah. Hopefully you have another – hopefully you're better next practice. Yeah. God bless you, right? Yeah. And what would happen is Johnny would come back dragged by mom. 
right? And he would be after that. He'd be the most. I'm sorry, coach. Oh, absolutely, because I was screwing up mom's social time or shopping time, which is fine. It's balance of life, right? But she saw, hey, this is my little reprieve. I get to go to Ross and go shopping in peace, right? And but you know, so back to that, you know, babysitting aspect of public school. So let me give you a solution on that. And I'm gonna, and, and yeah, if, we, yeah, we're looking solutions, dude. So Come flowing on. wells shall lead the way. I keep talking. I'm, I'm if you looked at flowing wells reading, th- uh, they're probably in the 40s for a reading level. But you know something? Their income demographic is much lower than Sunnyside or TUSD. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. I mean, we call it's it just a pack. We call it Pliskin Acres down there, <laughs> named after Snake Pliskin from uh, Snake uh, Escape from New York, right? Yeah. And so what they've learned, they've built a culture at that school, which is fascinating. And what they do, they do a full court press on parents' kindergarten. First day of kindergarten, before the first day of kindergarten, they're doing a full court press about the parents being involved, more than any other school I've ever seen. Really? And you can see that that pays dividends over time. And they give opportunities for those parents. Remember you said you weren't? Mm -hmm. Now, it might have been the way you looked. (laughs) <laughs> okay. It could be. You're a handsome yeah, guy, Clint, but, but you know. And you think I would no. <laughs> but what I'm saying is they would provide those opportunities for the parents mm-hmm. to to mm-hmm. serve mm-hmm. and connect. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think they've done a good, and and it didn't matter who the, who the superintendent was. They've changed, you know, superintendent maybe three or four three or four times over 30 years. But you know that, something? The tradition stays. Isn't that where uh no, I won't ask that question right now. I'll ask it later. Uh, I know some people that go there. As a matter of fact, a kid that just graduated, John, David, if you're listening, um, good people we know, and they have been involved with their kid. That makes sense now. Yeah. Now, they would they would be involved anywhere. That, that's the kind of people they are. They also raise – But they're encouraged to. That's great, great to hear. Here's another thing. This might tie into your person, your, your, your young man, you know. They raise um, – they're trying to educate good citizens also. That applies here. There's a citizenship quality to what goes on in the Flowing Wells experience that's not going on in these other places. Yeah. So it's one time – at times where we've had either a, a board member or a superintendent on the show over 14 years of show, there's always that caller that calls up and goes, you know, I went to go to my granddaughter's recital. And I was very lost. And I was impressed on how many students came up to me. Engagement. How can yeah. we help you? Looked me in the eye and then guided me to where I needed to go for my, cool. my granddaughter's flute recital or something. I keep hearing those stories. Hey, David, I'm going to ask you this. Isn't this where our buddy is one of the principals there? Uh-huh. Yeah. We, oh, so I'm going to say, I, what's his first name? Is it Jim? Uh, Principal Brudenkamp. Okay. Tim's brother. Okay. He's the principal there. Nice. Nice guy. And I can, I don't know Tim, but I, or uh, Tim's brother, but I know Tim. So if he fits the mold, that would be his character right there. Right. Now we understand. I worked at a charter school way back in the day in Phoenix called Challenge Charter, Challenge Charter School. They were one of the first. This is close to 30 years ago. So charter schools were just getting started. Yep. And you know what they were great at? They were great involving everybody. They had spaghetti dinners. They had fundraisers. They had, and you know what? We had like 300 kids. So that's, 600, 700 people would show up for a spaghetti dinner. That social component is crucial. I think it's the most, maybe the most important part of it because it drives the other, doesn't it? Of course, right? And, it, it makes it easier for parents to support each other support the school support their kid because they get more invested in what's going on in the school so we and i actually i worked there i wasn't a teacher but i worked there i was uh, in transportation and they had buses you mentioned buses earlier they were actually a charter school that had buses okay. and i remember dot arizona dot came out and they're like this is the dumbest thing i ever saw you guys with buses so i'm like yeah but we have 300 kids in that school and probably 250 of them ride these buses. Yeah, so it works, our, works. our 300 is pretty much because we're picking them up, right? Sure. And they were like the parents that you mentioned with uh, little Johnny and calling mom. <laughs> oh, they wanted to be there. So that social component they for everything is massive. It was huge. 
It, and, everybody and, supported and, the cause. Right. And any group thing, church. Yeah. Right. School. Right. Anything. You have to have the people are going to get, the, you know, break bread, have a little beer, yeah. have a vino, have a coffee. Yeah. It all makes sense. Yeah. So I'm, 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 a, I'm a cradle Catholic. We suck at social stuff. <laughs> okay. And so I remember going with my brother to uh, over. It's in it's in the hood of Tucson. It's on Fifteenth and Grant. It's called Saint Michael's Ukrainian mm-hmm. Church, Catholic mm-hmm. Church. And after church every morning, Sunday morning, they all break bread. There is always a potluck, and they spend an extra sixty it. minutes together having a it. big potluck. That's what that's doing what it, it up, used right? to be. And so it builds that close knit community instead of everyone running to their cars. Were you when you were a kid growing up in in New York? Did you, did you, was Have, that kind of the way it of was? Of course, all then? the time. Yeah. When I grew up in, in the 60s and 70s, there were meals after most services, it seemed to me. You had meals, like. you had, you know. Um, people hanging out in the parking lot. People church, fe- like, like church festivals seem to happen like every three months. Like at OBC <laughs> and now, you can't tell if they're coming or going. There's just a mass of people moving around. Uh, you know, if they're not setting, you don't know if they're coming in or going out or going over here or heading to a class. I, matter of fact, I love those kind of environments. You know, Chris, we're, we're coming to the end of the hour. No, but, no, don't but, say that, Clint. But here's the, here's the cool Holy thing. Holy crap, we are. Here's the cool thing. We're not, <laughs> we're not done yet. We've still got time. So I, I want to give you a laugh. Please. My producer, Matt, is watching. Mm-hmm. Oh, yay. Has Matt got a question for us? <laughs> A snarky comment. He goes, Perrier, geez, you'll have to be slumming back at the station tomorrow morning. (laughs) I heard David from the other room. (laughs) Donated. Donated. Donated uh, to the cause. I'll have Matt Neely swill water tomorrow at the uh, the Bustos Media Station. Yeah. Mm, This Perrier. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> David said you haven't got the invoice yet. <laughs> LTD SOBs. Yeah. It's a good stuff. Yes. Okay, good. So, you know, Chris, whether it's three or four, we're going to make it five or six <laughs> next time. Because we let, you know, I was talking to Tammy, my beautiful bride of almost 32 years now. God bless you. Yeah. It's good. God bless her. Uh, I'm a recipient of being married to an incredible lady, but I said, Chris and I have like a common, you and I, you haven't, we have, we've known each other a while, but we haven't known each other Correct. more than a few months. And I said, I'm, he's one of the few guys that you just, you can just feel a connection with. And that's cool. And I don't want to just belabor the point and talk about how terrible things are. And they are. But I want to offer people hope. And when I have you on, you gave hope while ago. This is big. <laughs> K through eight, stay away from public schools. Yep. Unless it's charter. Because charters are public schools. Yes. And people kind of lose sight of that. There's so, a misconception on that. But they are. It's an easy thing. Like literally what you should do is when you uh, give a um, – it's a uh, we have a hey, David just had a beautiful new baby yes. in his life, right? Yeah. I got so you have right like there. a you know like a you know sometimes there's a hey there's a baby party or a christening or whatever's going on, right? And you go and you bring so you get the get the gift right for the for the family of the child and on the card put all the best for you and your baby. Remember K through eight, <laughs> private or charter, right? That's that's what you should put the new dad. But now he's got two babies, but <laughs> new one. He, I can he, even maybe we can start a business, right? Yeah, I think you we were entrepreneurs, yeah. Yeah. so let's do a greeting card company. Yeah. <laughs> that on the front, I love it. It has the baby like in a car, yeah, and there's a road sign, yeah. right, and it says Charter, Charter Private School. This Way, yeah. and, it, and it looks like a Golden Hill, yeah, and then K through eight, and it just Doom. looks kind of kind of like Doom. the wrong side of the track over on yeah. the left, and say, yeah, congratulations. Or I can do a kids or kids like a Dr. Seuss book. Of uh, don't don't go to public school during K through eight. See, to me, I'm just kind of like having flashes of where we're at on this. That's okay. This I'm, gonna have some all, more, I'm gonna have some more of this period. Of, yeah, a lot of um, from France. Like as a, I grew up in a small community in the Midwest, Southern Illinois, uh, halfway between East St. Louis and or St. Louis and Evansville, Indiana, a few mi- a few hours south of Chicago. <laughs> the community was involved in everything we did. 
every I went to a P, you, I've said this before. You go to a PTA meeting. I think our grade school had 125 kids in it, K through eight, a small community. There were 300, 400 people at every PTA meeting. Tammy and I, when we left the charter school, only because it was such a drive, uh, we moved our kids to the to the public school there, and t- and then when we moved here, because of the education, we went to the first PTA meeting. Nine hundred kids in the school. We got to get there early, honey. There we got to get there early. Nine hundred kids. We're going to have three thousand people in this room. Where are they going to put them? Was my question. Was there eleven? How naive. There were there weren't eleven. <laughs> there were seven people in that room, counting my wife and I, and two or three teachers and a couple other parents. Seven people total. That was it. That's all we had. Of course, I didn't go back to any PTA meetings. I mean, it's total so I, I know one day we got to talk restaurants. You want to have yeah. a restaurant discussion, but what, one day what I here's this is a homework Tell assignment again, for. David. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What did Young David say? Yeah, we're gonna in another direction, but yeah, I'll okay. come back to it. So, um, our homework assignment for all three of us for a future discussion. I have this brilliant intern, we call him Christian Schmidt. He's a Marana kid. Yes, okay? you mentioned him before. And so he went to Princeton. He's an uber genius on municipal planning and everything mm-hmm. like that. And his work, his young life's work, has been America needs a lot more small towns and less cities. That'll be I our, couldn't agree more. That'll be our next discussion. Matter of fact, I was just writing something the other day about how important – local bustling businesses and neighborhoods and communities and places to go are together, not just to have fun, but to grow a community that if we're all doing well, at least in my opinion, if we're all doing well, then we're successful. If we've got some we're losing, whether, whether through drugs, alcohol, homelessness, we can't, this is the best we can do for people with mental illness. Just let them live on the street. Are you doing another hour show? But we don't. We don't have okay. time for another. Okay, I want to totally switch gears. This is <laughs> this has made the news. This is going to come out of left field for me, and David's going to have to tell me again how to pronounce the name. Pastiche. Yes. Restaurant. Yes. Do you know the backstory and what's going on with that crazy thing? I mean, I, I I've read like the news. Crazy. Stories. Yes. It's, Over the last couple of months. Oh, it's something out of a Lifetime movie. Isn't that nuts? Because it first came up on the. Oral Valley Women's Group, which you got me involved with because oh, of the right. shout-out. Oh, that's right. I tagged out. you because so someone needed it's there. magic cookies yeah, exactly. or something and from they, Copper. They no, they had cinnamon rolls. It was, it was cinnamon rolls. So they um, – thank you for doing that, by the way. And so I'm like, well, I'll get in there, and it shows up in my feed. And it mentioned this, and it mentioned pistache. Pastiche. Pastiche. And I'm like, I did a little quick – you know, I got a former cop next door to sure. me here. I did a little quick – this story is crazy. It's bizarre. It's sad and bizarre. Quick story, if anybody doesn't know, and I don't want to get into the details, <laughs> but the guy is in jail for murder. That's Someone he just like, met. Yep. Yeah, it's insane. Isn't that nuts? Did you did you ever frequent the place? Did you? So I frequented uh, the previous owner was an amazing guy named Pat Connor. Okay. One of the nicest, best restaurateurs and ever. And owned it up until fairly recently, correct? Well, a few to several years ago, several years ago, because Pat had cancer, mm. died early, way too early. Mm. And if you talk to people who worked with Pat or worked with Pat at like previous places, like uh, my friend Rocco from Rocco's Little Chicago mm-hmm. worked with Pat, I believe, in the old Cafe Terracotta days. And he'll tell you that Pat was one of the best the guys best he ever guys. worked with in his life. So then this new crew took it over after that. And after Pat died and the new crew, I never had interest in going yeah. back. So well, and, I, some- and, and no one ever went to me, you know, Chris, you really got to go to Pastiche. Yeah. No one yeah. was telling me this. I, so, I heard I heard it. I I'm not a res- I got a so many great restaurants like to go yeah, to. Yeah, I, yeah. I, better, I better have some good well, word of mouth. You know what? We're going to wrap up for right now. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but here's what we're going to do. As soon as we shut this down, we're going to open our calendars. Yes, sir. And bring him back. And, and I want to talk to you about what you're just talking about right there. Hey, guys, thanks for thanks for. Letting well, us thanks play. for having me. Thanks for letting us play. And we're gonna have a, for joining us. We're going to have a Bordeaux 52. <laughs> we're going to do next time while KVOI keeps feeding me sewer water in bottles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to discuss this. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, local Marana, LTD Media, Copper Creek Cookies. You know the drill. You know how to get a hold of us. You got any questions on anything we said today? 
reach out to us. We'll include it in the next time we get together because I guarantee you the next time to get together, at least a portion of what we talk about will will be more of this. I'm there, man. So complaints at live the media, yeah. live the dream media. Yeah. Com. We welcome your emails in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that from the pastoral staff at OVC and you especially when it hits something hard, it's like, I welcome your email. Chris dropped that a couple of times Sunday. Absolutely. Thank you for everything. <laughs> hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thanks, Dave.